here is the Bible. You might think it's just a really old book with so many words. But in here, there are stories that have been told and retold for thousands of generations. Stories told around campfires, in front of huge crowds. Stories told around the dinner table. Stories that have been made into TV shows or films. Stories that have changed the course of history. Stories you should know. But where should you start? Well, welcome to 10 Must Know Bible Stories. Stories worth exploring. I'm winning. Yes, got one in there already. Your turn, Dave. I don't even know how you did that. I Like, I barely started. Four. Four. Move four. Yeah. Two. Oh, that means I get two turns. I move two, and I can get another turn. Two what? turns. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. What? Why? Two. Two turns. See? Right. Another... I've got four that time. Oh, perfect. Your turn. Two. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Three. Five. Oh, you've got to go back now, five, because you got two fives in a row. What? Yeah, that's the rule. If you get the same number twice in a row, you go forward the first time and then back the second time. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. Really winning here. Loving this. Two. Two turns, remember? Oh. Two turns for two. Ugh. Have you ever played a game with someone that just cheats all the time or they just make up their own rules? It really ruins it, doesn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. I thought playing with my own rules would make it more fun, but I guess it did kind of spoil it for you. Yeah, well, that's okay though. But, you know, if everyone just played by their own rules all the time, how would you even know what game you're playing? That's a good idea for a quiz. Guess the game. Oh, yes. Okay, it's time for Guess the Game. Are you ready? I'm going to describe three rules. You've got to work out what game they're from. Here we go. Game one. Rule one. The numbers have to match. Rule two. Uh, if you can't match a number, miss a turn. Rule three. The person with the highest double gets to start. Did you get it? Do you know? Yes, it's dominoes. Here we go, game two. Rule one, only one player can use their hands. Rule two, stop when the whistle blows. Rule three, only kick the ball, not the other players. Did you get it? I bet you did. It's the ball. Game three, here we go. Rule one. If this piece is on a horse, it can go one sideways and two forwards, or two sideways and one forward. Rule two. Your queen can move in any direction as far as she would like. Rule three, your king can move in any direction too, but only one square at a time. Did you get it? Bit trickier maybe? The answer is chess. Here we go. Game four. Rule one, count 20 with your eyes shut, no peeking. Rule two, if you're hiding, do not move. Rule three, when you find someone, shh, hide with them. Did you get it? It's not hide and seek, it's sardines. So you see, rules are definitely yeah. important. And without rules, we wouldn't have my favorite thing in the world, football. Oh, you're right, but it's not just games we need rules for, is it? I mean, imagine if when we were driving, we all just followed our own rules. That would be chaos. There would be so many accidents. We need to stick to the rules to stay safe. Yeah. And even right now, with everything that's happening with coronavirus, there are rules that we have to follow, like okay. wearing masks in shops, washing our hands. These are rules we have to follow to stop this virus spreading. And I think there are rules that are even bigger and more important than that. Rules that everybody, everywhere and every generation should follow. Rules like not taking things that don't belong to you. That's stealing. Or rules like... Um, not hurting other people. 
Hmm. That's interesting. Let's have a think about that. Can you think of your top three rules that everyone, everywhere in the world should follow? Hmm. What would your top three be? Take a moment to think about that. Hmm. That was actually really difficult. I had more than three rules that I think everybody should follow that I wanted to write down. Oh, but you stuck to three, right? Because I, I kind of, uh -huh. I, I kind of cheated if I'm honest. I, 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 I wrote ten rules down. But to be honest with you, they're not really even my rules. I borrowed them from Dave? someone. Dave, you borrowed them. Who did you borrow them from? Well, I borrowed them from the story of the Ten Commandments from the Bible when God gives ten rules to His people. That is a great Bible story. Let's tell that story now. Cool. Today's Bible story is the Ten Commandments, which is right at the start of the Bible, in the book of Exodus, chapter 20 if you want to read it. But first we need a little backstory. Now you might know that a lot of the Bible follows one people group, the Israelites. They're a tribe or a nation that God speaks to, that God helps. Um, but at this point in the Bible, they were in a bit of trouble. The whole tribe had moved to Egypt. There's the pyramids. But the Egyptians, well, they had made the Israelites their slaves. They were enslaved and they were having to work for the Egyptians. It was horrible. They cried out to God, help us. And God heard them. God raised up a leader named Moses. And through Moses, God did some amazing miracles. He brought some plagues on Egypt because they wouldn't let the people go. But eventually Pharaoh said, fine, you can leave. And they crossed over the Red Sea. You might remember that story. And they were free. They were very excited. Until, of course, they realized, well, what do we do next? They had never been free before. They'd always been slaves for generations. So they camped out, the whole nation, there's their tents, next to a big mountain called Mount Sinai. And Moses decided to go up the mountain to pray to God. And while he was praying, well, God gave him some very special rules for the people to live by. Rules that would make them a happy and free nation. Ten rules called the Ten Commandments. Let's look at them. The first rule was, have no other gods besides me. Have only one God. God wanted them to be loyal to him. Number two was similar, that they shouldn't have any idols. It was really common back then for people to make a big idol of stone or gold. God said, well, I'm not like that. Don't bow down to an idol. Pray to me instead. Number three, well, this was about respecting God. Don't use God's name badly, but always treat God with respect and love. That was how they should treat God. Number four, well, that was keeping the Sabbath. Now, Sabbath just means a time of rest. When they were slaves, they didn't get any rest. They had to work every day. But God wanted them to take one day a week just for him, just for rest. Now, number five. This one is about happy families. To be a happy and free nation, well, God wanted their, ha their families to be happy. And so this one is about respecting your parents and obeying them. And that was one way to make for a happy family. Number six, well, this is easy. Don't murder people. Don't hurt other people. <laughs> that was a rule. Number seven, well, this is also about happy families. It was to be faithful to your partner. If you were married to someone, well, you should be faithful to them. Number eight, well, this is no stealing. And that is a present that someone is stealing. <laughs> of course, you're going to be happier. You're going to be a free, happy people if no one is stealing from anyone else. That's still a rule we all follow, right? Nine. Well, this one is not telling lies. And especially the Bible says, don't tell lies about other people. It doesn't say don't tell stories or have, you know, fun story time. It says don't lie about people. Number 10, don't covet. That's a funny word. Covet means don't want what other people have. So don't want another person's tent or their donkey or maybe their um, family. Well, it's the same for us today. We shouldn't want other people's houses or clothes. It makes us unhappy when we want what other people have. Those are the Ten Commandments. What did you think? Do you agree with them? That's such an important story. And I wonder if any of you have heard it before. And I also wonder if any of those 10 commandments, the 10 rules that God gave, match what you wrote down. I bet at least a couple of them did. Yeah, I would think so. 
And if you're struggling to remember all these ten rules from the story, I actually have a bit of a trick for you because Jesus came along a little bit later in the story in the Bible and he boiled this ten rules down to just two that we have to remember. Ten rules to two rules? What did Jesus say the most two important rules were? Well, Jesus said that number one, we have to love God. And we love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Okay. And then the second one was that we have to love others. Love them the way that we love ourselves. So number one, love God. And number two, love others. That's pretty simple. Yeah, exactly. Just two rules to remember. Very easy to remember, in fact. But actually a whole lot harder to do every day. Mm. So we talked a little bit about the rules that God gives. Um, but what about... God himself. What does this story tell us about God, the rule giver? Is God fair or unfair as he gives the rules? Is he mean or kind? What do you think? Hmm. This is an interesting question because we have to remember that this story comes right near the start of the Bible mm. and it's when Israel is just getting to know God for the first time. These rules are a way of finding out what their God is really like. And I don't think he was being mean giving the rules because I think he wanted to keep his people safe. So giving them rules is a way of doing that. He knew the rules would keep them safe. Yep, so it's about safety, but it's also about relationship. Because I think God wanted to get to know the Israelites, and he mm. wanted them to get to know him too. And I think those rules helped that to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a bit of a challenge at the end of our assembly, Dave. We've realised that those rules can be boiled down to two rules. Jesus said it was about loving God and loving others. So we would like you this week to think of a new way you can either love God or love others and try and do that for the whole week. Mm. So you've got to do this challenge too, Dave. What would you go for? Okay, so I'm thinking about the love others one mm -hmm. and I'm thinking I'll make my wife a cup of tea every morning. That would be a good thing to do, right? That would be a lovely thing to do. Good challenge. I think I'm going to think about loving God and one way that I can get to know God better, so kind of love him more, is by talking to him. So my challenge to myself is to talk to God, to pray to him when I'm going for a walk every day. Mm. No, they're, they're good ideas. So have a think for yourself yep. what you're going to do. But before we finish, I just want to point something out. Can I just say that despite your cheating, I actually won the game? You did! You won! Well done, Dave. But have we got time for another game, do you think? Cause oh, yeah, I've got time. I, I really fancy Monopoly. Will you play? Uh, I'll play another game, but I don't want to play Monopoly. Oh. I want to play football. Oh, Come on! Let's go!